What's up guys? How you all doing? Welcome to another video. Hey, today we're going to be checking out more on our Unity. We're going to be checking out how to use multiple objects. This should be a fairly quick video, but how to control multiple objects with a single script. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on M.I. Sperry. Okay guys, so like the intro said, we're gonna be checking out how to do multiple objects um, and a single uh, script to control them all. So like a single manager script. So as usual, we're going to hit new, bring that over here. We're gonna call this our beginner multi object, if I could spell. So we'll go ahead and create our new one. Of course, Unity is loading on my other screen, so you'll have to give me just a second. Um, but basically picking up where we left off in our last, uh, video when we were just, we just had one object and we had one, uh, uh, controller, uh, script that was on that one. So we'll wait till this loads and we'll get going. And while this is loading, I want to say new merch. We've got the new engineered line. This is one of the nuclear ones. Um, we've got multiple other ones. We even have masks. I'm going to be getting some masks so we can show you guys what they're going to look like. I'll show them off here for too long. But we got some of those. We got the shirts. Um, if you want to share your inner nerd, your inner engineered, there you go. Um, there's the, the shirts that we got. Um, we also got, um, I'm working on getting maybe some hats and things like that. So definitely check that out down in the description below. All right, so it looks like Unity has loaded. So first things first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our build settings. Um, I'm using an Android platform, so we're gonna choose Android. We're going to switch our platform, which that will go ahead and load up. And uh, there we go, now it's loading, okay. <laughs> the first second I didn't know if it was on another screen or something. And so that is now loaded, so our platform is now uh, in there. So now what we need to do is we need to add uh, some code and some objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move around our little world here. Uh, last time we talked about which buttons uh, move things around, which don't, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on what, how to look around and how to move in the environment. So let's go ahead and plop down a couple of 3D objects. Let's do a sphere. We'll plop down a sphere real fast. We'll get a view of what it looks like. That looks pretty good where it's at. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate that sphere and uh, pull it off, you know, to the side here. So that way we got two of them to look at. And what we're just going to do very simply is just change the color of these like we did last time. But instead of doing a uh, script that's attached to the object, we're now going to go the other way around. We're going to attach the objects to the script. OK, <clears throat> so to do this, let's go ahead and in our assets folder, let's go ahead and create a new C sharp script. We're going to name this oh, multi-color uh, manager. Let's, let's say that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So we'll start Visual Studio. It's firing up on another screen here. So I will drag it over once it loads. So bear with me. All right. Here we go. So there is our uh, script as it stands. Again, it's totally blank. Now this time we're going to be employing what's called game objects. Okay, so we're going to be using some game objects here to which are going to basically be a handle to our objects that are in the 3D world. Okay, so to do this, we're going to first declare a public and then we're going to call it game object. I'm going to call it, uh, yeah, sphere one, uh, just sphere. Yeah, that'll work. And then we're going to say public game object and we're going to call this one sphere Whoop. we'll call it sphere 2 okay so now once we got sphere 1 sphere 2 is our game objects i'll show you how we'll we'll hook this up later then we're going to do like we did before and we're just going to go ahead and we'll simply change the color of it so first we need to initialize so we've got sphere.get uh, component and remember, we were just using the get component. Well, now you can do sphere.getComponent, okay? Or, or basically, whatever your game object is, uh, the name and then dot, and that actually has a subclass to it. So renderer, just like before, except I can't spell. Um, <clears throat> a lot of errs in there. All right. And then we're going to do a dot uh, material. 
dot color. And we're going to set that initially to, oh, let's just do black. Why not? And then we're going to do the exact same thing except with sphere two. Okay. So we'll set both of those to black to start with. Oh, we also need to keep track of our color change uh, object, remember? Uh, so we'll int, uh, we called it uh, color state. Set that equal to zero to start with. That way we can keep track of, you know, when you're touching it, uh, which one is where. So now we get down to kind of like our render loop, right? So now we're gonna do our, we're gonna check for if somebody's touched the screen. So for each, and we're gonna say uh, touch my touch uh and then we're going to do it in input dot touches so oops touches so that way we know we figure out how many times something has touched the screen which we're only counting on just once and then do our thing oh, let's see this is obviously way too big let me uh well i might be able to there we go shrink that down a little bit so you can see Okay, so now within here, we're going to check our color state to see if this is initial or, you know, basically which color to do. So we're going to do an if color state is equal to zero, then we will do, we will go ahead and change our colors, uh, basically, if somebody touches this thing. So we're going to say, oh, but first we got to check to see what kind of a touch that we have. I forgot about that. So we're going to do an if uh, my touch dot phase is equal to touch phase dot began. Okay, so that will help us oops, with the began side. There we go. So what this is, so this is doing like last time, it's saying it's we're checking the phase to see if somebody has touched the screen. And that's what the dot began is. You can have all different types, whether they touch it and hold it, they touch swipe, you know, whatever they're, they're doing. We're just doing the beginning of a touch. So the minute their finger taps the screen, uh, it's going to it's going to break into this. So now now that we've got that. We're going to go into color state equals zero. Then we're going to set our sphere. Actually, I'm just going to go up here and take it from here. And we're just going to copy and paste that down there. <laughs> and well, for some reason, it's not tabbing it over. There we go. And we'll change the color to something like blue. And we'll change this one to something like, oops, uh, what should we change it to? Green, maybe? Yeah, we'll change it to green. And then, of course, we need to update our color state and set that to a one. Now we'll check on the flip side, else if color state is equal to one, whoops, equals one, then we're going to basically do the other, the opposite. So we're going to go down here. This is going to be zero. And then we'll set both of these back to black. Uh, Okay, so you basically have uh, check for touches. Um, we're going to create a new, you know, touch object called my touch. Um, it's going to take in any kind of input touches, and then what we're going to do for that, for and that's for each one of those touches, whether it's a touch and a swipe or a touch, whatever. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check the face to see what kind of a touch it was. Here we know that something touched the screen. Here we're checking to see how it touches the screen, how it interacts with it, and then here we're checking to see our color state to know whether we need to change it to our colors are blue green or if we need to change it back to black based on you know them tapping the screen so this all should be good so i'm going to write this out i'm also going to do a quick build to make sure i didn't miss anything no nope, we got one succeeded so we're good to go so now we can go back to here so now what we need to do i'm going to go ahead and rename this let's rename this uh yeah we'll call it sphere we'll call it sphere two so now, how do we attach this? Now, we could just drag this onto uh, one of the spheres, but the problem is it, it, it's, it's only going to be, it'll be attached to only one sphere. We need it attached to two spheres. Okay, so the easy way to do this is to create an empty game object. Okay, and then we will attach this to the game object. Okay, so now we've got our multicolor manager, and notice you've got two little kind of like slots for game objects. See, it says there's none right now, but they're for game objects. These slots have your variable names, as you can see. So like if I, if I pull open this again, remember we named it sphere and sphere two, right? And that's exactly 
what is right here. So whatever you drag and drop into these slots is going to correspond to the handle sphere and sphere two, okay, which is what we're doing. So we're going to grab this first one. Whoops, I forgot. You got to click on game object and then click and drag. So we're going to lock that one in there, lock this one into the second one. Now we are good to go. And to prove that to you, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do build and run. We'll give it a name. Uh, we'll call it uh, game object multi color. Sure. That's the name of the, the APK pa package. And I do have my temporary burner phone here. I do have this little guy um, hooked up, USB debugging turned on. And like I said last time, you know, if you don't know what uh, USB debugging is or, or how to turn it on your phone, there's tons of videos out there. In fact, there's all kinds of Google instructables, everything um, that will show you how to do it. So uh, don't worry about that. So what we'll do is we'll sit here and we will uh, let this come up. Let me see. I can probably make my camera bigger here. There we go. There's there's me. So this should uh, fire up here in a minute. While that is firing up, I will take this moment to talk about uh, the Tindy store. We've got some new stuff in the Tindy store. Uh, guys, we've got some new stuff. I got these. These are slick. These are a scam away. You remember when we did that? We did a video on that. I may throw a video link somewhere on this one. But basically, I'm building these now and you will be able to uh, get rid of robocalls, and it really does work. I've been using it actually upstairs uh, at my work, and it really does work. This will basically emit the sound of a modem, and it confuses a robo-dialer into thinking that you are a fax machine, and it the theory is it will remove your number from the list. I just, I, I've gotten other robocalls, but it hasn't been the same number. So it does it does seemingly work. Um, I've been using it and my robocalls have actually reduced. Now you still get the telemarketers because they don't use the robocall system. Um, but uh, any robocalls, this does a great job of doing. These are on sale now. You can purchase them. Um, the first go around, I'm going to see uh, how many people are going to do it. So there's limited quantity of these. But go check out uh, the scam away that we built in uh one of our videos here and uh you can purchase your own scam away and then keep them scammers off of you but like i said limited supply so uh get them quick while they uh while they last um depending on depending on how fast they go uh will let me know uh how many i'll have to make for the next round so hopefully this is just about done yep it's done okay so here we go. So we should be, yep, getting our unity. I'm going to turn it sideways. So there we go. So there's our two little uh, balls in space. If I touch the screen, then they change. Woohoo! And that's all there is to it. So that's all there is to doing multiple objects. You just create that, uh, uh, let me get back to our desktop here. You just create that single uh game object that's just empty by just right clicking saying create empty object uh, attach the script to that and then everything else you can uh, drag and drop into the script as you build the game objects inside it so that's pretty much the whole thing right there so that's pretty easy so guys thank you so much for watching the next video definitely stay tuned in this series we're going to be checking out even more we're going to dive, dive even deeper so i think we're going to be getting this next video we'll go into some virtual reality which ought to be a lot of fun so we'll get into actually taking one of these and strapping it to hold on i gotta get it strapping it to one of these and uh playing around with it and uh the reason i cut the hole out here is because eventually we're gonna be doing some augmented reality and virtual reality so stay tuned for that um we'll be doing mixing the two together to form what's called mixed reality so it ought to be pretty cool so definitely stay tuned uh make sure that you are uh subscribed ring that bell if you haven't done it yet so that way you get notified when the new videos come out uh make sure you follow me on twitter and uh, uh instructables and 
uh, what is it, Facebook and all the other social medias because I do post uh, uh, information out there. Also, check out the Reddit link and uh, post your videos, post uh, projects that you're doing on the Reddit channel. Definitely check that out because on Mondays, we will review the ones that are posted on the Reddit and you just might get your project shown right here on MI Sperry. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you have a good rest of your day, good rest of your week. Take care in these crazy times and we'll see you next time.